right, hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM joining you from San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Ryan Kugler, who is just up the road actually in Los Angeles. How are you doing, Ryan? I'm good, thank you. Thank you for your time. Yeah, absolutely. And normally I would introduce somebody and say, you know, this is Ryan and here is the company that he runs. But this is a little bit different because this is Ryan and he runs three different companies at one time. And that's kind of what we're going to talk about today, because the concept of a layered company, which I'm sure many of you out there like myself have probably never heard of that concept before or that term before a layered company. Uh, so, Ryan, first off, as we were just saying in the preamble before we came on air, uh, how did you end up with three companies at once? Because most people, like conventional wisdom would be, Ryan, focus on one thing only and make that successful before you start looking at other things. So how did you end up with three companies? Good question. Thank you. Uh, basically, it came, I was in, working for one company, which was a family business. So I was part owner, minority. And I, it was my day-to-day, -day, my everyday, what I did, 10, 12 hours a day. And uh, it basically, what it came down to is when sales were down or there were issues, sometimes I would go home unhappy. I wasn't happy or my pay would be cut. And as a result of that, when things started shifting, uh, circa 2008, if you get the hint, I basically mm -hmm. said, you know what? I want to create something where I don't go home unhappy and I don't go home thinking I'm going to get a pay cut or I could get a pay cut because I'm only at one job doing one thing. And I decided, you know what, I'm going to actually play the game and I'm going to be even more entrepreneurish and I'm going to start three companies or I'm going to have three companies. So this way, if one of the companies is down or I don't get a deal or I don't get a sale or something like that, I don't go home and be like, oh, it really sucks. I didn't get this. You know, I might get a pay cut or I'm not going to get the commission. If I have two other companies, the likelihood of two or one or all three being bad, meaning losing deals, losing sales is very, very, very unlikely. So if you have three companies and you're juggling all three, you're more likely to go home happy. That's basically what I'm looking to do. And that's that's what I've achieved by having three companies. Sure, it's more challenging, it's more work, but that's how I came about with the idea. Yeah, so it's almost like a diversified portfolio approach, isn't it? Uh, having the having the three uh, companies. And and before we go on, I mean, let's uh, tell people what the three companies are, because here's the other interesting thing is uh, the first two, uh, the, the event and marketing company, I mean, there's some connection there. The third one is, a little bit out there left field yes so um i started out the family business that i mentioned that i was at for some 20 25 years was basically a wholesale business we were in the liquidation business we would buy overstocks close out surplus inventory excess inventory and sell it to retailers um but we primarily focused on the media world which is movies and music which can all be downloaded so as you could tell the business started shrinking and going down and basically i then left that business and started my own called a plan b which basically is if your plan A doesn't work, we're your plan B, where we basically buy your inventory and give new life to inventory so that you don't have to throw it away. And so that is a wholesale distribution business. I call it a secondary wholesaler, uh, but that's business number one, which technically is what I've been doing almost my whole life. The second is a marketing business. We make high-end marketing material for people where basically we make brochures, but it's not just brochures if your mind is just moving on. It's brochures when open play a video. Yes, there is a video screen inside of the physical paper cardboard brochure, like a TV screen that automatically starts playing your company video. And the third is an event business. Uh, I've, as a hobby on the weekends, I would help out nonprofits with their charity races and runs, 5K, 10Ks. And I decided to open up my own business and produce these for other nonprofits. So that is the third business, the event business. So between all three, yes, events and marketing is kind of the same, but they're actually two different corporations with two different names and have never actually sistered up with each other and helped each other out. It's really been separate other than the employees that work for the technically all three companies. Um, okay, so Ryan, so some some people watching this would say, okay, like I, I I struggle with the stuff that's going on for one business or for one single job that I do. Uh, tell me, how do you pivot between the three businesses, and how do you manage that? 
It's a good question. So first of all, it does really just take a decision to go, you know what, I'm just going to make my life more challenging, more fun. I'm going to do three <laughs> things. It's almost like if you got three kids in your house, you got three kids, you and your wife are raising them. One's, you know, a girl, one's a boy, one's a baby. So you're, so it's all different verticals, should I say, but it's all the same thing. You're looking to raise the kid and invest in them and make them do well. But uh, how do I keep the, you know, I basically, you know, in the morning, I go through all the emails from one company and then go to the next company and then go to the next company. And then, you know, whatever calls I have, I just expand my horizons, whether I'm doing a call for, you know, a, a Zoom meeting, a business meeting for this company or another one, I just automatically have to shift gears and just go that way. Just like also when I'll go out of town to visit customers, I will go visit customers for the other companies too, which makes it even right. more exciting. Yeah, and and uh, and as I was saying to you before, I mean, I ran two companies at once at, at one stage, and people used to ask me the same question, and I used to just say that you become very good at prioritization, and the things that are most important are the things that you deal with, and the things that are less important, you know, you push you push to the side, and I think when you do that, you often discover that the less important things are actually not important at all. That is true. You're completely correct. Um, and like, for example, you know, if we have an event coming up on Saturday night, so most of my day on Friday will then be getting ready for the event and doing anything that I, that is needed. So that will take priority because that's the event. And I also do follow, you know, like you said, what's the priority or follow the money? You know, what, what, mm -hmm. what is bringing in the most income? Let's work on that for the next 25 minutes until the next call. And the other interesting thing that uh, about what you're doing is that, yes, you have three companies and I think people would assume, OK, you've got three companies, you've got three sets of employees working discreetly in three different companies. But in fact, you have people who work across the three companies. Yes, I, I think I coined the word a layered company, mm -hmm. which basically means the same like five to seven to 10 employees, it changes, you know, just turnover or whatever, um, mm -hmm. really do the same for all three companies. So we're all in the same office. Okay, we actually have like three spaces here in the same building. And we so the person who handles logistics, shipping, whether they're shipping some marketing brochures to a customer or they're shipping 50 truckloads of luggage for a customer or they're shipping some water bottles to an event, their job is shipping, their logistics. So they're doing the same thing, but also I think it gives excitement to the employees because they're not always doing the same thing. So there's, mm -hmm. there's, there's change, there's, you know, things going on that, you know, make it more exciting rather than just coming to work, you know, or just think of someone who works on a conveyor belt, you know, they're, they're going like this on a conveyor belt and just keep stamping the same thing. Well, if the next day they're, you know, okay, now we're going to go paint a car on the conveyor belt or the next day, now they're going to put the Snickers in the, in the plastic wrap. That's a change. That's neat, but it's the same job and they know how to do it. Mm -hmm. So when you when you've been recruiting for people for your organization, what do you look for? Because you know, there's a lot of people who crave this kind of demarcation and I do one thing and this is my role and all of this, which kind of drives me crazy because I don't know if you can really operate that way in this world anymore. But how do you when you go to recruit, what are you looking for in, in people who are able to work in a layered organization? It's, so what you just said is correct. When, you, when I'm doing interviews, I have had people that say, well, I, I can just focus on one thing and this is what I do and that's the best I can do. Unfortunately, that probably gets them to lose the job in the interview if they say that. But, but I do preface when I start the interview, I say, hey, we're a layered company. We have three businesses. This is what we do. And between the three businesses, usually the person I'm interviewing or looking for always gets excited because they're like, oh, I really love events because I want to make events and I want to be a director. Or they go, oh, I love marketing and that's so cool. And wow, you have this technology part of marketing. Or, ooh, cool, I've always wanted to sell products to Amazon or, re, you know, so when I have a meeting or an interview with someone, a prospective person to hire, they're always excited about something. And then, yes, they might bring up what you just said and say, hey, I'm very focused, which some people like with coding or, you know, mm -hmm. a graphic designer who's, you know, doing Adobe Illustrator or something. That's usually the response I would get from them. But I just say, hey, you know, I just kind of like, well, if you're if you're good at Adobe, if you're good at just writing in Word documents or just doing numbers in Excel, well, that's fine. Your job is this. You're just going to be doing numbers for costs on an event or breakdown of costs on, you know, the, the cost of goods on a certain product we might be buying. Yeah, no, and I think that's I think that's uh, I think that's a that's a really good point because I think some people sometimes people overestimate how different you know businesses are. It's certainly been my experience that if you have a good sense of business and you are organized and you have you know a good skill set, 
it's it's not that difficult to work on mo in different uh, industries and switch between different industries to be honest well uh, yeah that's i mean people are breathing talking and eating at the same time <laughs> yeah exactly exactly yeah and, and to, back to your point i mean you're managing you know you're managing your household which is probably within the most chaotic businesses you could be in <laughs> yes it is <laughs> Um, so what have you, over the time that you've run, the, you've had this layer organi layered organization, what are some of the things that maybe surprised you? You know, people have asked me, like, what are the challenges and so forth? And I, I've always mentioned always the same thing, technology. So technology is always changing. So mm -hmm. even we're all using Zoom, where a year and three months ago, most of us were using Skype. OK, so the, the, so you have to you have to learn a new program. You have to learn a new system. You have to download it. you got to enter in your information. you got to create a new password. And hey, every day the password has to change because now they need 32 characters instead of 16. And now they want, you know, the name of your dog instead of the name of your cat. So there's this technology I always found is the latest. And when you have three different companies and you're buying software or something and this software only works with that, then you need this software for that. So that, that's what I find is the most interesting. And then going back to your earlier question, which was a great question, um, just, you know, if you're interviewing someone, you really need to make sure that they're kind of, you know, pan determined and thinking of many things and not just focused on one thing and they can look and see many different things. And can they handle a lot of traffic? That's the other thing. You, you want to find people who, even I'm guilty of this, sometimes, you know, they get 35 emails in a day and they just can't reply to all the emails in a day. And I always have, you know, our policy, you have to go home with all your inbox completely empty, return all your calls, reply to all your emails. You can't have things linger on. That's kind of our company motto. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a great point because I think obviously, uh, you know, with, with three different companies and with people working across three different companies, like you could lose, it could be, you could lose track of things very fast if you're not disciplined. Yes, that is true. Now, I will tell you a funny note with three different companies is sometimes, so I call it a trifecta. So three, our three companies, my three companies, has done business with the same company, trifecta. So we did an event for the company, we sold them marketing material, and we bought inventory from them. To me, that's a big win. That's why I'm telling you. And so sometimes it gets confusing, and I bring this up because we're, if we're talking about a company, and I go, oh, well, it's XYZ company. Well, wait. Wait, are we talking about the event we did for them? Or are we talking about the brochure we made for them or what? Yeah, which is, a, which is a, I'm glad you brought that up because that's such a great example of, uh, of you know, maximizing your, you know, your business's reach, uh, you know, getting business out of, getting business for all three uh, companies out of one, uh, one customer is amazing. Yes. Um, and so, okay, so that's, that's the challenges or, or the surprise of things. What, um, what are, what are some of the things that, uh, I mean, have you ever considered like, going further maybe adding more businesses or do you think do you think there's a do you think there's a limit to what you can do in this area uh it's that's a good question i think that there is a limit uh <laughs> i think sure i can have uh, own other businesses but as a silent owner or be on a board right. but do i physically want to be in there juggling the ball of a fourth business no and i've had people come to me and say well you own three businesses here can you just do this and just run it for me and i just say no i i actually can't <laughs> So, so I don't think I would want to, and you know, every once in a while, I do have the thought where some of your listeners might be thinking, wow, three, I don't know if I can handle that. Yes, I go home sometimes and go, oh, maybe I should just sell one of the businesses. But then the next day I'll come to work and we will get a new win, meaning we got a new account or something like that. And I'm like, oh, this is great. Now I see why I do this because <laughs> it just really makes it exciting when you do that. And there's just ongoing business that keeps happening. And do you have periods like where one business is like flying and maybe the other business not so much and you have to, I mean, how do you, because it's always a challenge, isn't it, about where you put your focus, like if, if one thing is doing really well, do you put your focus there to help it do even better or do you focus on maybe somewhere that needs some attention and struggling, because I always find that that's uh, in, in, in companies, people often make managers particularly make that mistake where they focus all of their time on their underperformers instead of focusing on getting their top performers to perform even more because there's a huge, way more benefit to that than there is to getting a poor performer to change a couple of percentages. It's a very good question. So my answer is first delegation and judgment. So mm -hmm. you have to use really good judgment, and really decide, okay, where, where do I want to put my attention today? What is going on? Yes, I have had where I have to send out a proposal. I have an event happening tomorrow and we have to do this big purchase. And I go, oh boy, where, where, where do I put the attention for the next one hour? You know, and you just have to have quick snap judgment to go, okay, I'm going to do this. 
it could be a wrong decision. Um, but you know, a decision, a quick decision is better than no decision and sitting and thinking about it for hours. That's the first thing. Second, delegation. So if you have something going on and it needs priority and you just can't and you're just your arms are stretched, you delegate to your awesome employees. You know, I have some great people that work for me and I will delegate and just say, hey, you handle this. And they do. And that's the other key is just having a supporting team next to you, behind you, around you that is always there to help and is on you know the same page as you. And that's that's the other way you handle it. Yeah, no, and I love what you said about making uh, quick decisions. That does not the same as making rush decisions. Uh, right. There's a difference between the two, because I do think sometimes people just spend way too much time on the decision making process and things are moving too fast for that. And I guess given given the fact that you're running three businesses, you don't have the luxury of, you know, mulling over things for, for long periods of time. <laughs> <laughs> that, I mean, if it's a long email that comes in that's paragraphs long, that one's going to wait until a little closer to the end of the day to read it. Um, but, you know, people, you know, my friends and other, you know, people I do business know me and just like, hey, just send me an email with one or two sentences. Great. Otherwise, if it's long, it's, it's, it's going to take the back seat for a few hours. Yeah, no, absolutely. Well, listen, um, Ryan, this has been fantastic. All of Ryan's information is going to be below this video. But before we go, Ryan, do please tell people a little bit more about yourself. Well, thank you. And, and I want to know more, more about you too, <laughs> but you have a website. So uh, just quickly, uh, Ryan Kugler, I'm based in Los Angeles, California. Uh, I do own three businesses, an event business, a marketing business, and a wholesale business. Uh, wonderful family, two kids, boy and a girl, lovely wife, and uh, you know, hobbies. I like to work. Uh, I used to like to go to movie theaters, but as you know, you can't really do that here in the state of California. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. But you know, just stay busy with work and the kids. And I spend most of my time doing whatever the kids' hobbies are. To be honest with you, yeah, and, no, and going to the birthday parties. You know how well that before COVID. You know, always mm -hmm. go to the birthday parties. And as I ask my daughter. What's, what's the food at the birthday party? Because that will get me to go even more. <laughs> uh, excellent, excellent. Yeah, well, I mean, I guess you probably did a lot of drive-by birthday parties over the yes. last while. <laughs> yes, that's right. All right, well, listen, thanks again, Ryan. My name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, Pipeliner, CRM. I will see you all for another interview really soon. Thank you. Thank you.